Hi everyone, welcome to Carousel Chats Restoration. Carousel Chats is a free virtual program series pre presented by the Herschel Carousel Factory Museum. And the Herschel Carousel Factory Museum is the only carousel museum located in the original factory right here in North Tonawanda, New York. And we are also partnered with the city of Tonawanda Public Library and the North Tonawanda Public Library who are both hosting in-person viewing parties. Thank you for joining us. Today we have Janelle Alstead Masson from Friends of Stewart Park and Katie Roth from Jane's Carousel giving presentations on their respective restoration projects. If you have any questions, please submit them in the Q&A box or the chat and we will try our best to answer during the Q&A section. Janelle, I will now turn it over to you. Hi, thank you for having me. My name is Janelle Alvsted Matson, and I am the communications coordinator for Friends of Stewart Park. And I'm here to tell you about the restoration work that's been done on our 70 year old Alan Herschel, uh, Alan Herschel Carousel. Uh, next. Next slide. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with Ithaca, we are here in central New York. You can see the yellow dot on the first uh, first picture there and um, in the Finger Lakes. Uh, Stewart Park is at the southern tip of Cuga Lake and the Friends of Stewart Park does revitalization work in Stewart Park itself and on the Cuga Waterfront Trail, um, which goes all around the waterfront of, of Ithaca. And then on that bottom picture there, you can see where the carousel resides in our park, which is pretty much smack in the middle of the park. Next slide. A bit about Stewart Park itself. Stewart Park started as Renwick Park. Um, the Ithaca Trolley Company started a park as an amusement park as a way to get riders to continue using the trolley on weekends to come on down to the lake. And uh, the amusement park ran approximately from 1895 to 1915. It included a carousel, which is not the carousel that's currently in the park. Um, and uh, the trolley park closed kind of with the advent of the automobile. And the park was used actually for several years as a silent film studio. And then it was brought, it was bought by the city and reopened as a public park and renamed to Stewart Park. Next slide. Now a little bit about our carousel's history. Next slide. In the late uh, 1940s, parents started asking the city for more recreation opportunities for their baby boomer children. Um, we see at this time in various newspapers, um, a lot more camps opening in town and a lot of playground improvements at parks across the city. It was also at this time in 1948 that we start seeing records of the city looking for a concessionaire with a power merry-go-round, um, looking to have them come to Stewart Park. And um, at first there were a few attempts of trying to get a concessionaire, but they failed. Next slide. But in November of 1951, um, there was a bid awarded to Robert L. Cochran. Um, and Cochran purchased the carousel and installed and had it open in Stewart Park in spring of 52. There was also a miniature train, which was also owned and operated by, by Cochran. And um, we don't know if the train was an Allen Herschel carousel, um, but we assume that the carousel uh, itself was built in 1951 and then installed and opened in 1952. It may be a 1950 carousel. We're kind of figuring that out right now. Next slide. And uh, for years, Friends of Stewart Park, there um, had been like news articles and um, word of mouth information that the carousel itself opened in 1951. But um, recently we discovered um, source materials that said it actually opened in 1952. That means that this year is the park, or is the carousel's 70th birthday and we're gonna have a big 70th birthday party for it. Next slide. This is a great picture that we just received from the family of Robert Cochran. 
um, of the carousel and the train. And um, we think that this one was taken around 1955. We don't have a lot of pictures from this time. So this picture is really exciting for us to have. Next. So since it opened, our carousel has run in the summer. Nowadays, it's approximately Memorial Day weekend to Labor Day weekend, um, running Tuesdays through Sundays for a dollar a ride. Um, every year, the carousel has been, in the past, has been taken down for winter. You can see here what it looks like when it's all taken down. Next. And the horses get packed into these little crates and put away for the winter. Um, as you can imagine, this had created a lot of wear and tear on the carousel itself, for, as well as the normal summer use. Next. Uh, we have a few pictures of the carousel over the years, not a lot, um, mostly from newspapers. Um, you can see that uh, as the years go on, the horses start looking shabbier and shabbier. Next. In 19, oh, it had different um, owners over the years too, I should say. In 1983, the carousel was um, purchased by Eleanor and Montgomery May. And at this point, the carousel was in pretty poor condition. Um, both uh, visually and functionally. Um, I had the fortune of being able to interview Monty May last summer, and he told us about the restoration work that they did on the carousel at that time. Uh, next. <coughs> Excuse me. The canvas top had um, already been ordered by the former owner, but had not been paid for. So they were able to get a new canvas top really quickly. Um, they also fixed the mechanicals, the lights, surrounding boards, and other details um, during the early uh, 1980s. They hired a local artist named Annie Campbell to paint the horses. If you go next. And um, they first took the horses to an industrial painter and spray painted them all down. And uh, then Annie did the detail painting. Our horses are all aluminum, so the spring like that really worked well. Um, here's a picture of her working in 1985. And then the next couple pictures are pictures of the work that she did. We go next and next. You can see big differences. And next, we have this great picture of the carousel horses being loaded and unloaded for the 19. Um, 87 season. And next. The Mays continued to own and operate the carousel until 1998, uh, but at that time they were ready to retire. They gave the city of Ithaca first right of refusal to purchase the carousel. The city had not budgeted for this purchase, and um, there was some worry that the Mays were not going to be able to um, sell it and might look for a buyer otherwise, elsewhere. Um, next. However, the city was able to get an anonymous donation, which is now no longer anonymous. It's attributed to the Park Foundation, which is a wonderful organization um, founded by Roy and Dorothy Park. And um, this allowed the city to purchase the carousel and it has been owned and operated by the city of Ithaca ever since. Next. In comes the modern revitalization of the carousel. Next. So moving on to the recent renovations, um, we'll start with uh, Friends of Stuart Park. Um, Friends of Stuart Park was started in 19, I mean, in 2011. Um, we are formed as a way to plan and fundraise uh, for revitalization projects within Stuart Park and later on began to encompass the entire um, Cuba Waterfront Trail as well. Next, from the beginning, the carousel restoration was um, named as a really important project. Um, as you can see from this picture, the, uh, this, oh, uh, I'll go next actually. Um, this picture you can see even better. Um, this is from 2011 and uh, Annie's beautiful paint job has started to fade on all of the horses. Um, this is actually my child on the left there. And um, 
You can see from the horse in the, the horses in the background that they still have a good amount of color, but it's it's definitely losing its charm. Next. So in uh, 2014, Friends of Stuart Park started the um, If Wishes Were Horses campaign, which uh, started in 2014 and was completed in 2015, where we hired local artists, Christy Sobel and Julia John to paint the horses. Next. And what was really neat about this um, painting is that um, they did the painting not just within the park, out in the open where everybody could see, but also throughout town. Next. Here's a picture of horses that are in the lobby of a downtown bank. Um, it kind of made the project a real two part um, art project where it was really art in the community, for the community, by the community, and long term for the community. Uh, next. Here is Christy with one of her horses. And next, here's Julia with one that she had worked on. Um, and uh, what's really cool is that these horses were never actually, or the carousel was never actually closed while this process was happening. Um, they were able to do quite a few over the winter. And then the ones that were done during the time that the carousel would be open, they just were removed one at a time or two at a time. And the carousel could continue functioning as it was happening. Next. This is a really fun one. You can see the trace of one horse from being painted, loading up for the winter, coming back out and being installed, and someone riding on it as well. Next. Friends of Stuart Park hosted a party for the carousel um, to celebrate the new painting of all of those horses. And um, then we moved on to the next restoration project. Next. Oh, here's a great picture with the horses painted. Next. And next. So our next restoration project came in 2016 and that was replacing the ugly chain link fence. Um, we had a board member at the time named Beverly Hillman who really took the lead on fundraising for this project and um, was able to secure enough that we were able to replace the ugly chain link with a nice looking um, wrought iron fence. Uh, you'll see in the next couple pictures. Next. Here. And next. Both functional and a lot more decorative. Next. So accessibility is really big. Um, it's at the heart of a lot of the projects that Friends of Stuart Park have really ever done. Um, Stuart Park is a naturally flat area, um, which makes it a really great accessible place. However, um, Friends of Stuart Park has really enhanced this with ramps and paving and widening and other improvements um, made to the park. Um, this included to the carousel in 2017. We made the carousel really truly accessible by adding a ramp. Next and a wheelchair-friendly chariot. Next. And uh, you can see that ramp went in and the chariot. And then finally, uh, Christy Sobel. Um, oh, the chariot, you can't really see, but um, wheelchairs can be strapped in. And there's also room for, which you can see in this picture, somebody to sit next to the um, person in a wheelchair. Next. And Christy came back, they modified that chariot, making it more fun and um, also painting it to kind of match the concept of the carousel. That goes really along with our inclusive playground. Um, we have a new inclusive playground that was built in stages from 2018 to 2020. Next, here's a picture of part of the playground. Um, you can't really tell in this picture, but um, we also hearkened back to the park's uh, history with the playground in the preschool section. There is a 
little hut that's made to be like a film studio and a little the one that has all the children on it is like a little trolley car and behind there is like a steamer and you can see where the um where the carousel is compared to the playground and this is before the safety surfacing was put into the playground next then came the permanent cover so Friends of Stewart Park and the city of Ithaca from the beginning had wanted to put in a permanent cover on the playground. The city really felt it was important because taking down the horses every year took a lot of time and energy and was also hard on the mechanicals and the horses themselves. And so um, we began working on a plan for a cover. We really wanted to have something that was functional but beautiful and um, airy and bright. Uh, we talked to Steve with Parkitects, who did an open air style cover, um, polymon cover, and landed on this design that has lots of air circulation, lots of light coming in. Um, let's go next to the next one. And um, it really highlights the carousel itself. This design was about a uh, quarter of a million dollars, but that was part of the million dollars that was um, identified by Assemblywoman Barbara Lifton to build the accessible playground. So that was all part of that funding. Um, we're really lucky that the timing for building this worked out um, when it was the beginning of COVID. Playgrounds were shut down and closed, but um, uh, the carousel would not have been running anyway. And so um, construction was considered essential work and therefore it was able to go up during a time when the carousel would not have been running anyway. Um, and next picture, here's what it looks like today. This is the backside. And next, here's what it looks like when it is all buttoned up for the winter. And um, you can see from that picture, the safety surfacing that goes around um, parts of the playground now too. And next, there's another angle from it. And next. And uh, you can see it on the right-hand side there. Um, this is a picture from the other portion of the inclusive playground and how you can see it from there. So it's all really close together in the heart of the park there. And next, here's a great picture of a family enjoying the carousel with one sibling who uses the chariot and another who is up on a horse. Next. So last year, Friends of Stewart Park um, it was their, it was Stewart Park Centennial as a public park. And so Friends of Stuart Park had a lot of celebrations. As part of it, we did nine free carousel days. This picture was taken at the first of these carousel days. I believe this child said that she rode the carousel like 20 times that day. Um, over the summer, we were able to ensure over 20,000 free rides on these days that um, we had the carousel open for free. And um, I mean, Carousel is only a dollar a ride normally, but for some families, like that's a lot. You've got multiple kids. They want to go more than one time. It adds up really, really fast. So it's really important to have these free carousel days available, we think. Um, it went so well. Next slide. That this year we are trying to get sponsors for every weekend of summer. Um, we would love to be able to make it so that at least one day every weekend of summer has a free carousel day. Next, we are also gonna be celebrating 70 years of the Stuart Park Carousel. Um, this is going to be on Saturday, June 25th from two to four. We've got free rides, we'll have cake, we've got entertainment. It's gonna be a really good time. Next. And uh, of course, for more information about the Stuart Park Carousel, you can visit Friends of Stuart Park's website. Um, we have a history talk that we did on the carousel that's more expansive from what I went through um, on our website uh, linked to the carousel page. 
And um, yeah, I'd like to thank the Herschel Carousel Museum for inviting me to chat about the restoration. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, you can pop them in the chat and I'll answer them at the end. Thank you. Thank you so much, Janelle, for that wonderful for that wonderful presentation. And now we're going to be hearing from Katie. Hello, everyone. I'm Katie from Jane's Carousel in Brooklyn, New York. I am the director here, and I'm going to be speaking in many ways on behalf of Jane, who did all of the restoration and who sadly left us in 2020. Um, so I know a lot, but not everything. So I'll do my best to tell you what I know and about our beautiful carousel. Um, so the carousel was built in 1922. We're having our hundredth birthday party on Saturday, May 7th. And we're really, really excited about it. Um, which is also the day after Jane's birthday. And we're going to have it declared by the mayor who's coming to make a proclamation, Jane's Carousel Day, which we'll celebrate every year with free rides going forward in her honor. Um, it was, there's 48 horses and two chariots. It's all original carved by the Philadelphia Toboggan Company. Um, it was the first carousel placed on the National Registry of Historic Places. So, we're really proud of that. Uh, next slide. Here's the carousel in 1935 in Idora Park, which is where it was from the beginning, 1922 until 1984. Really beautiful. You can see the organ there in the back corner too. Um, next slide. Um, this is a picture from the devastating fire at Adora Park in the mid eighties, where they sadly lost their park and the firefighters heroically saved the carousel. Um, next slide. So Jane and her husband had been shopping for a carousel for some time and had traveled around the country. The idea was always to bring a carousel to the Brooklyn waterfront they had the vision to imagine this rundown piece of land becoming a beautiful park with a carousel one day. Um, so they found themselves at the auction for Idora Park, which this is a picture from. And uh, next slide. Here's Jane um, at Idora Park. You can you can see the original palette and on the horses and the colors are really different, which you'll notice later. So anyway, Jane, when she saw this carousel said, this is the one, it's beautifully carved. It's all original hand carved wood, linden wood, every single horse is original, nothing's been replaced. It's been just lovingly maintained. And um, this is the one if we're serious. So next slide. This is the piece of land before it was Brooklyn Bridge Park. So all of that industrial area um, in front of the Brooklyn Bridge, and then beyond the Brooklyn Bridge, and then much further up the river is now all beautiful parkland. And this kind of first open paved area on the lower right would eventually become the home of Jane's Carousel. Next slide. So here's the auction at Idora Park and each horse was auctioned off individually. And then the idea being that they would tally up all of the individual prices and offer it to the highest bidder who offer it at, to keep it together for the total price of all the individual horses. So there was only one bid for the total ride. And that was from Jane and David Valentis and the crowd cheered because their beloved carousel would stay together rather than be sent off piecemeal. Uh, next slide. Here, here you can see the lead horse, which is has the PTC 
carved onto its saddle. And you can also see that the paint has been, was blistered from the fire. It came that close to the carousel. Um, next slide. So here's that same lead horse arriving in New York City in the mid 80s. Got the twin towers and a run down waterfront. And there's David Valentes with his dream. And um, next slide. Here, skipping ahead to Jane's restoration work, um, she decided to do it a little bit differently. She was an artist herself and she was very meticulous. She worked as an art director for many years for like Estee Lauder and um, very detail oriented person. She also went to art school for printmaking. And if you know any printmakers, you know how process oriented they are. So she approached the carousel in the same way. Um, that wasn't her plan from the start. I think she thought that she would find someone to, to do the restoration. She wasn't planning on spending her entire adult life restoring horses, but it turned into at least a 25 year project for her to get the carousel, um, to get the carousel restored. So she started looking around for different methods and she just really, they weren't agreeing with her. She didn't wanna, there were many, many layers of park paint and she didn't want to strip it and she didn't want to paint over it. So she just kind of, not in such a serious manner, just started seeing, well, what's underneath all these layers of park paint? And she just started chipping away at it, um, layer by layer herself. Uh, next slide. So here's some of the exacto blades that she would save over the years in her to-go food containers and pretty little um, biscuit tins. And she spent eight years by herself just um, peeling paint. So I, she was kind of like a cool artist. She would come, she lived in downtown Manhattan and would come across the bridge to her studio here in Dumbo, Brooklyn. And I guess at the time, you know, just get a cup of coffee and a croissant and start scraping paint. Um, next slide. This is the, a beautiful picture of the lead horse when it was finished. So you can see the level of workmanship that she brought to this and all of the things that were restored. Uh, next slide. Um, the entire carousel was, was scraped down. So here are the original 1922 stencils that were uncovered beneath the paint. Next slide. And then, and then because at the time there weren't, you know, digital methods of doing everything and the kind of type of artist Jane was is she documented everything by hand and she did color pencil drawings and tracings and then had new stencils created. Next slide. Here's a detail of a horse that had been scraped down. They all have beautiful jewels. Uh, next slide. Here's an example of how she was charting the color bindings on the original paint from 1922. She would take a photograph and then put a tracing paper over it and use colored pencils and keep notes. Next slide. Here's a finished horse. I think her, her original idea was to scrape down all the paint and she, she was so enamored of the original palette from 1922 and the artistic choices made at that time, she wanted to just preserve it and code it in, in as it was, but it was just too fragile and there was just too much chipping and other repair jobs that needed to be done to the wood that it was clear that it wasn't really the best plan. Um, next slide. There's another drawing. So there's 48 horses. So she did, she did this for every horse. Next slide. Um, all the rounding boards and the panels received the same treatment with scraping down and then new stencils being made and, and regilded. So by this time, this many years in, she brought in a team of artists and she was directing them and working alongside of them. But 
upholding the standards throughout. Next slide. Here's uh, those same columns. Ne and an artist working on them. Next, yeah, next slide. Um, here's some of the middle panels. Everything was very greasy and dirty from its journey from Youngstown, Ohio. Uh, next slide. Here's some of the drawings of the um, mirrors and bevels. So many things needed to be replaced. And she, she found all of the perfect things. Um, next slide. Here's an artist working on the ceiling panels. I think that was a sample. Next slide. Some new um, molding being made for a hook that needed repairing. Next slide. Just a view of the studio. Uh, next slide. Here's a few tickets um, that were found during the restoration of like little tickets and things that were stuffed into the horses over the years from Idora Park. Next slide. It's a, a detail of some of the repair, I mean, the original colors from 1922 and looks like some wood filler. Next slide. Jane's drawings. Next slide. There's a studio shot of once all the horses were finished in her studio. There was quite a lag between when the horses were finished and when it was installed in the pavilion um, that it lives in now. Uh, Jane always said that the restoration was hard, but the, actually the hardest part of the whole thing was all of the red tape and politics and getting it placed into um, its current home. So I think that was discouraging at times because it was all finished and ready. Um, she assembled it and installed it at a location offsite to kind of to show it working and beautiful and, and to garner support from the community and public officials to get behind it and say like, this is real, we have a carousel, let's put it in the park, let's do it. Um, next slide. There's Jane working on um, gilding, I think. Everything was gilded in gold and, and palladium. Uh, next slide. Some finished horses, ponies. The chariots were left with the original 1922 paint. She, she did not have artists repaint them. She just sealed it properly and as an homage to the original 1922 artists. Uh, next slide. It's a couple of ponies and a ceiling panel before they find their way back. Uh, next slide. Here, so here's Jane's Carousel in its home. You can see the Brooklyn Bridge in the lower left and the Manhattan Bridge on the lower right. And then that's the East River directly behind it. And the New York City skyline is, of downtown is off to the left. So, and then the pavilion itself was designed by Jean Nouvel, a French architect who really was kind of enamored of the project. And he really wanted to do a circular I mean, they wanted a circular building and he really wanted to do a square. So it was his idea that took a little warming up too, but now it's hard to imagine it any other way than with our square pavilion. Um, two sides of the building open up completely for in the summer and then they close completely in the winter. We're, we're open year round, so it is heated. And um, yeah, next slide. There's just a close up of a armored horse. Next slide. Here's Jean's carousel at night. It's lit up, we keep it lit up at night. The light bulbs are a nice warm LED that we just leave on 24 seven. So it just, you can see it from around the city. Uh, next slide. And here we are back in Brooklyn Bridge Park, looking from the water up towards Jane's Carousel. And it's, it's just, people just come from all over just to see it and take pictures in front of it. And everything's a photo shoot these days. So it's kind of like a giant 
selfie palace some of the days, but we're just happy to be able to make so many people in the community happy during this time. It's been a hard time for New York City and just still a really happy place. So thank you for your attention and I will be happy to answer questions. All right, thank you so much, Katie, for that great presentation. So we do have a couple of questions that have come in. And of course, if any of our guests out there have some, please put them in the Q&A box or in the chat. So our first question is gonna be, what training is required to be a restorer? I can smell there too. Yeah, I mean, I can, I can really only speak to what it goes down at Jane's carousel. It's probably different at every single carousel. Um, should I should I be answering? Yeah. Yes. Uh, sorry. Either okay. I can answer unless I specifically say it. I apologize. Oh, okay. I know that the artists working at the carousel were specifically that that painted that there's different hierarchies. There was like the skins, the skin painter being like the highest hierarchy and and so forth. And they they had backgrounds actually as trained oil painters, figurative oil painters. And Jane went to like a local art school that was like hyper-realist art school and found art students. So I don't think that's a requirement by any means, but that's how that's how she found the artist she was working with, working with. I agree. In our situation, um, we had just found local artists that uh, were talented, were willing to do research on the proper way to um, paint the paint the horses that are gonna that's gonna be a long term. You know, you don't want to you don't want to have somebody come in and say like, oh yeah, I could do that, and then two years later have the, all of the paint rubbed off. Um, but uh, but yeah, I don't know if there's really requirements other than being a great artist. Right. And our next question is for Katie. Did Jane use oil paints and what was used to seal the paint? Yeah. So yes, they were oils. For the skins, it was oil paint like Windsor and Newton and the, the finer oil paints actually than Windsor and Newton, but um, like Old Holland and whatnot, depending on the type. And then they were sealed with a varnish that of course she had to make her own varnish blend because she didn't find the sheen on most varnishes acceptable. So she she made her own varnish and the oil paints had to cure for a month before that varnish was applied. But the saddles, the saddles, manes and um, tails need to be touched up more often and they're, they're flat colors versus the skins which have much more dimensions on our carousel and those are Japan paints. And they are oftentimes just straight out of the can, um, those. And then they're, again, they're varnished as well, but it doesn't take us long for the paint to cure. That answers, I hope that answers your question. All right, so now we're gonna have another one for both of you. And so what is the average time of a restoration or what, how long did it take your carousels to be restored? Go ahead. Uh, so in the Stuart Park Carousel, um, in the case of that one, uh, it was, I mean, I'm, you know, the whole process of the restoration was over the, over years. Um, but when it came to just the horse painting, um, you know, we only had two artists working on it. Uh, and therefore, it was not a quick process. And um, they also really wanted to be able to make it so that the carousel could run while they were working on horses. So they didn't want to have them all taken off at once and done, you know, like base layers on all the horses and then secondary layers. Um, so ours started in fall of 2014 and ended around June of 2015. And we, I mean, well, Jane worked on the original restoration from 
the mid 80s, you know, for like 25 years, starting from, from the mid 80s, the carousel opened in its location in 2011. So it was out of commission from 1984 to 2011 because all the mechanics and everything was completely updated. But that being said, we do a mini restoration every year um, to keep up with it rather than have to wait and do a big one because we are open year round. So we do a mini restoration in um, January and February on the, on the days that were closed and we try to work it out as best we can. And that's, that's pretty much just for the high wear areas of the, the saddles, the means and the tails and any kind of nicks and just a general cleaning because they just get so much use that they get really just, a lot of it is just dirt. Um, but we did have one of the original oil painters, actually the guy in the slideshow that was do, painting the light blue ceiling panels came back. I invited him back from Texas because now that Jane's not here, I just really want to make sure that her original artistic intentions are honored. And I wasn't there during that time. And he was the one that she trusted. So I had him come back, which he, he did over his Christmas break. He's a painting professor. So I was so grateful. <laughs> so he came over his Christmas break. And during two weeks, he painted the skins of four horses. That's any that's how long it took. So he didn't do the saddles or any of the trappings, just the skins alone. That's how long it took. Yeah. All right. All right. And Katie, can you elaborate on the mini restoration? Um, is there a process? Do you do a certain number of horses each year or does each one get a little bit of a touch up? Yeah, each one gets a little bit of a touch up, you know, kind of, it's just kind of an as needed, you know, just walking around and you know, we get a lot of like, we have a no high heels rule, but somehow, you know, things just get scratched and nicked and dinged. So that indicates what we do. Kind of like what the white horses, of course, get really like grimy <laughs> and the mane especially because they get just pet and cuddled. And um, so the, the dirtiest horses, the mane and tail, and then, and then the saddles will do every mini restoration along with re-gilding and reliefing um, as needed, yeah. Well, here's the fun one. Here is a fun one. Um, so we all know that horses have the romance side with jewels. Uh, how do you go about finding replacement jewels if you need to? Have any of you experienced this? Yes. Yes, recently I had to find a jewel and I was like how am I going to find a jewel there's got to be like a container around here somewhere because Jane kept everything but there was no container so I went on I went on Etsy I found um that there's many sizes of jewels that are and there's many different facets of jewels so I definitely ordered too many accidental jewels and I finally got the right jewel and it was just see-through and I was like well our jewels are mirrored so what will I do? And then I learned that I need to spray the back with uh, the Krylon like mirror finish. So now I had mirrored replacement jewels. <laughs> yeah, trial and error. Janelle, do you have anything to add to that? We don't have jewels on our horses, so. <laughs> it oh. It sounds as though that's complicated. Yeah. <laughs> kind of glad we're just strictly the paint. <laughs> All right. Um, this is another one for Katie. Are the horses removed from the carousel during a mini restoration of Jane's carousel? Yeah, that's a good question. They are not. Um, the first time we mo removed the horses for any painting was this last Christmas break when the guy came and we brought them to the studio because the oil paint and the situation called for it. But the mini restoration happens while we're open in January and February because we're closed Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then we're open Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So our poor two artists are just constantly like dealing with, you know, equations like how long is this going to take to dry and when can I do this on a Monday and not on a Wednesday and they, they really have to work around it and then completely clean up and leave no trace by Wednesday. Um, we, we use horse blankets we, or moving blankets with like a cute bow 
on the, with a little do not ride sign for the horses while they're still maybe curing um, during our open hours. All right, let's go with this one. So how, what is the process like to match paint colors? Is there an official system? Well, I think Pantone is generally regarded as like the color language, but as far as matching paint colors, it's really funky because the sun fades everything. So what are you gonna match? The existing or the original intention? Because, and then the paint that you put on is going to be a different color and you just start to create a riddle that can't be solved. So sometimes it's better to just do nothing or repaint something entirely than do a little bit of touch up. But I did learn recently that oil paint will dry the same color as when it's applied. So doing like a tiny touch up to just blend something in oil paint is like probably a better bet because it will be consistent with the surface you're already working on. Here is another one. Um, how do you get rid of park paint? Park, how do you get rid of park paint? Yes, to find the historic uh, underlayer. Right. Well, Jane chose to use exacto blades and to just literally scrape it because if, if um, I think it was re recommended to her that she strip and dip, which you know, just dip it in stripper or mm -hmm. use some chemicals, but then the original paint would have been lost. So she chose to just sit and scrape it with an exacto knife, gently, layer by layer. Mm -hmm. All right, it looks like this is gonna be our last question for today, unless anyone else drops one in. Um, so how do you decide what time period to restore? Did you, do you know how they chose to restore your carousels? Um, did they go back to the year it was first made or did they choose to do a different path? Go ahead. On the Stuart Park carousel, they chose to go with the, um, the style of the carousel, which was a kind of, I guess, kind of art deco. Um, and, uh, and, used old photos of the carousel from when it was new as many as they could to um, get the style that they kind of to represent that. And um, Christy and Julia are, um, did that more so than Annie. Annie took um, the carousel kind of in her own, um, into her own style a little bit more than Christy and Julia did. So the carousel now is more reflective of what it looked like when it first came into the park. Yeah, and, and, and Jane's carousel, the horses are with the 1922 color palette. I mean, Jane did have to make design choices along the way, but she really just used that as her North Star was just the findings of, I think she, you know, it was her choice to use like real gold or it was her choice to, you know, certain things, but um, yeah, she was just trying to restore it to its 1922 palette as found underneath all of the layers of paint of 60 something years worth of paint. Yeah. All right. Thank you to the both of you for giving such great presentations and being able to answer all these questions. Thank you to everyone for joining us. And when you exit today's Zoom, a survey link about today's session will pop up and I'll be also emailing the link to everyone. And we did record this session, so it will be posted on the HCFM's website uh, probably within a week or two. And if you have any questions or would like to participate in a future carousel chat, please email me at education at carouselmuseum.org. And thank you again for joining us all and have a great day. Thank you. Thank for you. Thank you so much. Bye.